R U N D I S L E V Gurusa. So you'd like to hear about how I got into this mess? How a regular guy ended up half a world away, unconscious in the backseat of a car belonging to a guy he thought he could trust, but turned out to be his worst enemy? Well, I'll tell you. Oh, I see you're awake at last. You! You... you traitor! Yes, I know you must not be very pleased with me right now. But I can assure you, things are not as they seem. You're one of them! No, I am not one of them. At least, not anymore. You're not? That was many years ago. I was quite another person then. You must believe me when I tell you I no longer have anything to do with that atrocious group of individuals. I am deeply sorry for what they did to your friend, and I do apologize for the way in which I extracted you from their headquarters, but I fear I did not have much of a choice. You had already discovered my name in that book, and I didn't think you were going to come with me voluntarily. So, where are we going? Back to London. I have a flat where we can stay whilst we come up with the next course of action. We're driving back to London? Yes. You are unconscious for most of the journey. We should be arriving in about 30 minutes. How did you even know where I was? All in good time, Mr. Jordan. I know you must have many questions, but let me assure you that I will provide answers as soon as we get to our destination. For now, you must relax. You need all the rest you can get, especially considering what you're going to be up against. Professor? Yes, Mr. Jordan? I think you owe me some explanations. You're absolutely right, Mr. Jordan, I do. Ask what you must. I will try to answer as best I can. What made you join the Knights of St. Anthony? As I said, it was a long time ago. When I joined, they were committed to a noble cause. Not the twisted shadow of their former selves you know today. What cause was that? They sought to transcend religion, to bring harmony by establishing a common belief system. However, once I learned about Cardinal Genovese's true intentions, and the great task, I realized the error of my ways. 
That is when my association with the Knights of St. Anthony ended. Exactly what is the great task? Cardinal Genovese believes that by gathering relics from different religions, it will somehow empower him. He seeks to control and unify all religions, emerging as their single leader. The problem is, he will stop at nothing to reach that end, as you have experienced. So what happens if he succeeds? I'm not sure. However, I do know he intends to perform some sort of ritual on New Year's Eve once he gathers all the relics. But I destroyed the exorcism amulet. Yes, but Genovese is not the type of man who puts all his eggs in one basket. He had planned to take the exorcism amulet last because it was the closest to him. However, he designated one relic as an emergency backup in case any of the others were damaged or destroyed. That means he is on his way to the location of the final relic, the same location he will perform the ritual. Do you know where that location is? Unfortunately, I do not. He didn't tell anyone where it was, not even Bianchi. So basically you're saying we've got two days to both find and stop him? I'm afraid so. Good thing I work well under pressure. Tell me about Cardinal Genovese. When I first met him, he was a very young, idealistic priest. I'm not sure what happened to turn him into the cold, bitter man he is today. Perhaps you should do some research on him. It is best to know your enemy, as they say. How am I supposed to find anything out about him? I know for a fact he was educated here in London. You may be able to find some records on him somewhere. Any idea where? Well, the British Library is an invaluable source for old periodicals. I would suggest going to the British Museum Reading Room. You can access their database of articles from there. That's my only lead, I guess it's worth a shot. Do you know anything about all the relics Cardinal Genovese took? Yes, he started tracking them down many years ago. It was only recently that he began taking them and causing all the paranormal disturbances you've been investigating. I'm not sure I understand all of this. I'll do my best to explain. An object on its own cannot have power. A piece of the true cross has no more power than a tea kettle. However, what gives it power is belief. If the belief in this object is strong enough, then it will gain power. So you're saying if enough people believe that a kettle has power, it'll gain some kind of magic properties? The kettle won't levitate or cast spells, but it will gain a sort of mystical energy from the belief, yes. People do not seem to realize what a great force belief is. Now, if an object with mystical energy is removed, it causes a disruption in the balance of energy around it. If there is another source of mystical energy nearby, the imbalance causes a reaction. In this case, a physical manifestation. So the skunk ape, the lost galleon, the sea people... Precisely. All your cases have related to local myths and legends. When relics were taken from these areas, these things people believed in manifested themselves. But what about Smailholm and Japan? Smailholm was a different story, one I will tell you soon. As for Japan, Bianchi took the tooth of the Buddha which caused an Oni, or Japanese demon, to manifest. This Oni visited Yamamoto and told him of the evil means to acquire great riches. I see. No more questions for now. As you wish. Would you mind answering some questions? If it weren't in my job description, then yes. But as it is, I don't seem to have much of a choice, do I? What can you tell me about the British Library? It's over near St. Pancras. The actual library, you mean? Yes, this is the British Museum reading room. You did notice the large sign reading British Museum when you entered? I did, yes. Good. Anyway, this room used to be the British Library's reading room but it was moved to the St. Pancras location about seven years ago. You have access to the British Library's records, don't you? We do, yes. It's more convenient to access them here than at the library. Assuming, of course, you just want a brief glance through the periodicals and card catalog. That's exactly what I want, yes. I'd like to use one of your computers. Very well. Please be aware that they are for research purposes only. I don't want to look over and see you playing one of those... games. Games? Yes, one of those jumpy-jump, shooty-shoot, nonsensical pieces of garbage. 
Today's youth wasting away in front of them instead of reading. Yeah, okay. Don't worry. I'm just gonna do some research. You can use that computer over there, then. Thanks. I'll just be on my way. Your Grace, a Mr. Ben Jordan is here to see you. Ben Jordan? Very well, send him in. Hello, Father. Thank you for seeing me. Hello, Ben. What may I do for you? I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I could. Certainly. Have you been at this seminary long? I have. How long, exactly? This will be my 67th year. No kidding. You must have seen a lot of people come through here. I have had the privilege to know many fine members of the clergy, yes. Do you know a Cardinal Genovese? Nicholas? Yes, I know him. He was a former head of the seminary. When he was appointed Cardinal, I took his place. In fact, this used to be his office. Really? Yes, I've kept it more or less the same as he had it. How well did you know him exactly? I would say quite well. I knew him for several years before he went to Rome. Do you still keep in touch with him? Occasionally I correspond with him, yes. Would you have any idea where he is now? I'm afraid not. What is this about, young man? You probably wouldn't believe me if I told you. Let's just say I'm looking for him. Looking for him? If that's the case, you'd be better asking at the Vatican. Oh, I know. I already met him there. What I need to know is where he's gone. What makes you think he's left the Vatican? A reliable source told me he's gone to look for something... somewhere. Pardon? Looking for something? Yeah, like I said, you wouldn't believe me. Anyway, I should probably get going soon. Yes, well, I apologize for not being able to assist you further. It's okay. I guess looking for information on him here was kind of a long shot. Thank you for your time. A pleasure, my son. I'll just be going now. Father Flanagan? Yes, Your Grace? It seems we may have a problem. What sort of problem? That young man who was just here. He was asking about Cardinal Genovese. Why would that be a problem? Ordinarily it wouldn't, but he said some things which concerned me. Such as? He said the Cardinal had left the Vatican to go look for something. You mean? I had heard that Bianchi had had some trouble retrieving the amulet. Perhaps he failed. That means Genovese has gone after the final relic. Do you think Jordan knows about the Knights? He may. I'll see if I can get in contact with someone in the room and see what's going on. In the meantime, have Jordan followed. We may have to keep an eye on him. Yes, Your Grace. Any progress? Not really. I found a little information on Cardinal Genovese, but that's it. I still don't have any idea where he could be. That is unfortunate. We're pretty much at a dead end, aren't we? I wouldn't say that. Oh, you wouldn't? Let's look at the facts for a minute. We have no idea where Cardinal Genovese is. He's going to do some kind of weird ritual in a couple of days. He killed my friend, my girlfriend is nowhere to be found, and we have absolutely no way of finding either her or Genovese. Not to mention, you don't seem to give me a straight answer about certain things I need to know about. So unless you start telling me everything, or have some kind of trick up your sleeve, I would consider ourselves pretty much screwed, wouldn't you? Now, Mr. Jordan... Who's that? 
I haven't a clue. No one knows where I live. Answer the door, Mr. Jordan, but be on your guard. Yes, may I help you? I'm terribly sorry to bother you, sir. I was wondering if you knew where I could find a Mr. Ben Jordan. Sure some nasty weather we're having, isn't it? Yes, but that has nothing to do with my question, Mr. Jordan. Wait, how did you... I've been sent to fetch you. There are certain people who would be very interested in uh, speaking with you. You're with the Knights of St. Anthony, aren't you? Very perceptive. So, what, I'm supposed to go with you now? That would be the preferable option, yes. What's my other option? I'm starting to get really sick of having guns pulled on me. None of this would be necessary if you just come with me. Percy, get the door! Excellent work, Mr. Jordan. We make a pretty good team. I wonder how the Knights of St. Anthony found us. I'm not sure. What I do know, however, is that we are no longer safe here. This is not just any member of the Knights. This is Donovan, one of the Enforcers. Enforcers? It is their job to deal with any threat to the Knights of St. Anthony by any means necessary. So what you're saying is, they're the Assassins? In as many words, yes. If they've sent Donovan, the other two won't be far behind. So where do we go? For now, I'm afraid we must part ways. I shall take care of tidying this mess. In the meantime, you try and keep a low profile while I find us some suitable accommodations. Where am I supposed to go? I don't know anybody in London. I recommend a pub called the Coach and Horses. You want me to go drink? No, you must keep a clear head. I am merely suggesting you go there. Get a feel for the locale. You may be... inspired. I really wish you weren't so damn cryptic all the time. But, at this point, I don't feel like arguing. Okay, I'll head over there. So, I guess I'll see you soon? Count on it. Until later, Mr. Jordan. Wait a minute. Where is the coach and horses? Have you got some time to answer a couple of questions? Talk is cheap. Alcohol isn't. What do you want to know? What can you tell me about that room upstairs? Ah yes, it's not much, but we are at that room out. I'm afraid you're out of luck if you need a place to stay though. The room was empty until just this morning, when someone hired it for the week. Rats. Who rented the room? Funny that. I'm not sure. It's a man. That much I know. He rang us and reserved the room this morning. Even though I've been here all day, I can't recall anyone showing up to take the key. But then, there are large portions of today I can't remember, so I'm not too much concerned. How do you know anyone is up there? Because it keeps place for food orders. And you haven't seen him when he comes down to order food? That's the thing. He's been using the dumb waiter. He sends down a note with his order, but at the bottom it always says expecting guests. Wait until arrival. So I haven't made any of his three orders yet. 
What is your upstairs guest order? Let me see. His first order was for pheasant, with a side of quiche and juice to drink. Next, he asked pie, with roast quail and jellies for dessert. Finally, he ordered prawns, a quesadilla, and java cakes. Strange. You're telling me we don't even serve half of this stuff. I'd like to place an order for some food. Ah, of course. You get a main course, a side dish, and a dessert. What will you have? I think I'll try a blood sausage. With a side of Jaffa cakes. And I'll skip the dessert, thanks. Alright, laddie. It won't be a moment. There you are. Thanks. Why, Mr. Jordan, what a pleasant surprise. Pleasant surprise? Only joking. I knew you would find your way up here soon enough. Wasn't it kind of dangerous sending the key down like that? Anyone could have come up. I would have been most impressed if anyone who was not you had managed to figure out my food code. Thanks, I think. At any rate, feel free to make yourself at home. My apologies for the sparse decorations, but I had very little time to set up. Well, I'm glad you're able to keep such high spirits during all this. Oh, someone has to, Mr. Jordan. Otherwise, why bother carrying on? You have no idea how often I've been asking myself that today. Professor? Yes, Mr. Jordan? I couldn't help but notice your decorative plate from Armenia. Ah, yes. I was hoping you would. That plate is a souvenir from a memorable trip I took there once. It was during my younger days, when I travelled through Europe. No kidding. My grandfather did the same thing when he was young. Yes, I know. Hold on. Are you telling me you knew my grandfather? Yes. Arthur and I were good friends. We travelled to Romania together. How come he never mentioned you? Oh, I wouldn't have expected him to. We had a bit of a falling out later on. But Grandpa Arthur went to Romania in the 1920s. Were you even born then? I'm not as young as I look, Mr. Jordan. If you'll have a seat, I can tell you about it. Do we really have time for stories? You have done all you can for now, and I feel this is something you should know. Okay. Now then, I met your grandfather in London in the early 1920s at this very pub. A mutual interest in travel and adventure meant that we quickly became friends. We travelled many places together, and in 1926 found ourselves in a small Romanian village. This particular adventure was significant not only for your grandfather, but for you as well. I'm listening. Scenic little town, isn't it? Indeed, quite atmospheric. Did you know this is where Bram Stoker took his inspiration for Dracula? Count Vlad Tepes, the man who inspired Dracula, was supposedly born in this very town. Of course, he was better known as Vlad the Impaler. Always a source of fascinating trivia, aren't you, Percy? I do like to keep myself informed. Right now, the only information I need is the location of the closest hotel. We've been traveling a long time, I'm beat. Yes, a good night's sleep sounds wonderful. Don't suppose you can read Romanian? A bit, actually. But I'm sure there has to be a hotel around here somewhere. The town isn't very big. Let's take a look around, then. Hello, my good man. Am I correct in guessing this is the town inn? Uh, yes, sir. 
That is correct. Welcome to the Hotel Dracula. If you wish to rent a room, it would be 500 lei a night. Sounds keen. What do you say, Purse? Seeing as this is our only option, I think we would do well to stay here. A room for me and uh, one for my associate, please. Oh, very good. Names? Arthur Jordan and Percy Jones. Jordan and Jones. Excellent. Again, welcome to the Hotel Dracula. May your stay here be pleasant. Mind if we speak for a bit? Uh, no, sir. What do you need? You know, I couldn't help but notice the dried brambles hanging on all the doors in town. Is that some kind of Romanian tradition? Uh, no, sir. That is... Yes? Uh, it is for protection. Protection? Against what? It is not good to speak of it, sir. Come now, what can be so horrible that you can't speak of it? The Headless Vampire. Did you say... Headless Vampire? Yes, it is an unfortunate plague upon our town. Tell me more. I do not know many details. You would do better asking the other townspeople. Although, I am not sure they would be willing to discuss it. This is a very delicate matter. And to talk about it with a foreigner... I'll worry about the other folks. Just tell me what you know. Very well. The Headless Vampire is, as the name implies, a vampire without a head. Actually, it is only the head which flies around and bites victims. How does that work, exactly? Uh, I am not sure. I myself have never encountered it, you see. But Dragomir, the farmer over there with the black hat, he claims his sister was bitten by the vampire. I see. Thanks for the information. Ah, oh, you are welcome. But please, sir, do not go looking for the vampire. Several adventurers have come here before you and tried finding out more. None have returned to tell the tale. Seeking the vampire leads only to misery and death. I appreciate your concern, but my friend and I are used to this sort of thing. You are? Ever hear of the London Werewolf or the Belfast Banshee? I'm afraid not. That's because Percy and I investigated and disproved both. I'm sure we can take care of your vampire problem. If that is the case, I wish you luck. Perhaps our town will finally be rid of this nuisance once and for all. We'll try our best. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Say there, could we have a chat? I don't see why not. I hear tell you know something about this headless vampire. Yes, I do. However, I do not like to speak of it. Come now, I understand it's a sore subject, but surely you can tell me something. I am afraid not. Do not take this as an insult, but I do not like talking about these things with outsiders. But my associate and I are well versed in local legends. We've even managed to deal with a few in different parts of Europe. Isn't there any way I can gain your trust? There may be. If what you claim is true, there is something you can do for me. I'm listening. North of the town square, near the cemetery, is the Sigiswara clock tower. My house is located next to it. Every night when I walk home, I hear strange noises coming from the top of the clock tower. I hear these terrible noises in the night, and they do not let me sleep. I think there is the spirit of a lost child up there, because the wailing is awful. Also, the clock has stopped working ever since this spirit appeared. Nobody has dared to go up and fix it, because they are too frightened. You must go up to the tower and help this spirit. If you do this, you will have no trouble with the vampire. And I will tell you all you want to know. Sounds easy enough. I'll have your so-called spirit taken care of before you finish your next beer. I appreciate your time. You are most welcome. Think you can handle a little climb purse? We'll find out when we reach the top. That wasn't so bad. 
Oh, speak for yourself. Well, I don't see any child spirits up here. Do you? No, but I do hear that noise the farmer mentioned. Quite unsettling it is, too. There has to be a reasonable explanation for it. Perhaps some further investigation is required. Hey, Bruce, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur? Think you can give me a hand here? Certainly. What do you need? This beam is stuck in the machinery, and I need your help to pull it out. Very well. On three. One. Two. Atta boy. Guess that takes care of the spirit problem. Indeed. The farmer will be glad to hear about this, I'm sure. Say there, could we have a chat? I don't see why not. I have good news for you, Dragomir. It turns out the clock tower isn't haunted after all. It isn't? Nope. There was a beam that had come loose and caught itself in one of the gears. That's what was causing the clock to stop working, as well as the noises. Ah, yes, that does make sense. Now, I feel foolish. Perhaps I should not be so eager to blame problems on the supernatural. Not all of them, anyway. This other one sounds like the real McCoy. Now could you please tell me what you know about the Headless Vampire? Yes. My sister was bitten by the vampire. What happened? She was walking alone at night in the cemetery. I, I told her not to do this. She knows it is dangerous. But she did not listen, and she was attacked by vampire. Is she alright? Yes. She got lucky. The bite was not deep. She was able to escape, but told me what she had seen. It was unmistakably the Headless Vampire. What else do you know about it? Not much, I am afraid. According to the legend, the Vampire is a woman who used to live in this town. You should ask my friend Florian here. He knows much about the legend of the Vampire. You mentioned your sister's vampire bite wasn't very deep. Does that make any sort of difference? Yes. If vampire bites you, it does not mean you become a vampire. The vampire must bite you and drink your blood in order for this to happen. If vampire bites you but does not drink your blood, you become weak for a few days but nothing else happens. This is why it is important to try and escape vampires as soon as possible. Interesting information. I'll keep it in mind. I appreciate your time. You are most welcome. Pardon me, but could we talk a moment? Of course, young man. What do you need? Your friend Dragomir says you know something about the Headless Vampire. Correct, I do. The Headless Vampire is not what you might think. Instead of a body with no head, it is the head of a vampire which floats in the air seeking victims. From the neck hangs its entrails, like a bunch of tentacles. The vampire will often trap its victims using the entrails as a restraint, then go in for the bite. Jeepers creepers, that sounds like something I wouldn't want to meet. Yes, it is an unpleasant sight to behold. This is why all the doors have dried brambles on them. The vampire's entrails are sensitive, and it fears getting them caught on the sharp points of the brambles. Hanging them on doors keeps the vampire away from our homes. Also, it is said that to kill the vampire, one must find its headless body and place sharp objects in the neck wound. This way, when the head reattaches, the entrails will be cut and the vampire will die. That's some useful information to have. Do you know anything about the vampire's history? A bit. The legend has existed for quite some time. Do tell. According to the story, the vampire was originally a woman. She was unfaithful to her husband, and when he found out, it infuriated him. 
As punishment, he stuffed her into a barrel and sealed her in. Sounds like a loving fellow. The young lady tried screaming for help, but no one came. Desperate, she shifted around in the barrel until her legs were behind her head, pointing up. She kicked the top of the barrel as hard as she could, trying to open it and free herself. She succeeded, but unfortunately, she kicked with such force that she caused her head to go flying off as well. Oh my. With her head went her insides, and since she committed the sin of adultery, she was doomed to roam the earth as an undead. That's quite a story. Any idea who the woman was? No, but I do know she lived in this town. You might consider searching the town records to see if you can get any information about her, if you desire it. Thanks. I just might do that. Thanks for the chat. Think nothing of it. Good evening, sir. Pardon the intrusion, but my associate and I are new in town and just having a look around. I see. This town hall. I am record keeper. English is not so good, but if you need help, I give. Thank you. We may just take you up on that offer. Excuse me, fella. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for me. Yes, I do my best. What can you tell me about this headless vampire everyone seems to be all in a lather about? It is bad luck to speak of these things. A local town woman died many years ago, came back as a vampire. If you are out at night, you can become her next victim. This is why everyone stays indoors. Any idea who she could be? No, I do not have enough information. If you can find her name, I can find the records for you. Great, I'll keep that in mind. I'd like to look up someone in your town records if that's alright. Yes, of course. What is name of person you are looking for? I'm wondering if you can find a record for someone with the initials RK or ST from 1850. I will see. One moment. Hmm. There are no marriages between anyone with those initials in that year. However, there is a death. You don't say. Yes, no name, but the initials are here. R.K. died on January 19, 1850. So who is R.K.? I do not know. I will look through records and see if I find anyone with those initials. However, it could take time. If you find name before, please tell me and I try to help. Okay, I'll try my best. Radu Corza. R.K. What was that, Arthur? I think we may have found the mysterious R.K. Only problem is, the date of death on this gravestone doesn't match the one the record keeper told us. Perhaps we should go back and inquire about it.
Excuse me, fella. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for me. Yes, I do my best. I'd like to look up someone in your town records, if that's alright. Yes, of course. What is name of person you are looking for? Could you tell me about Radu Korza? I think he may be RK, but the date of death on his gravestone is in 1850. Let me see. Radu Korza. No, he died in 1862. However, he had a daughter, Ruxandra. Born 1812, died... Uh... Hmm. Yes? Strange. I do not have record of her death. But she surely must have been the RK who died in 1850. It is possible. Strange. No official record of her death, only her initials. Is there any way to find out for sure? Maybe. Kurza family house is at the top of the hill near the hotel. There is an old Kurza woman who still lives there. Maybe you ask her. Thanks. I'll just go do that. Hello there, Miss Corza. Yes? My name is Arthur Jordan. This is my associate, Percival Q. Jones. Pleased to meet you, Mom. We were wondering if we might be able to come in and ask you a few questions about your family. My family? How do you know my family? We've been doing a little research into the Headless Vampire and- Oh wait! You get away from here! I'm sorry if I upset you, but- Go away! Leave me alone! Now hold on just a minute. It's very important that we speak with you. I have nothing to say to you. Somehow I doubt that very much. Look, my friend and I aren't just going to give up. So, until you agree to talk with us, we're just going to keep bothering you. Fine. Enough of this foolishness. You may come inside, but please. I am an old woman. I do not have time or energy for these things. Thanks. We just want to ask you a few questions, that's all. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yes? Do you know Ruxander Corza? I knew her, yes. She was my sister. Your sister? Were you close? We had a good relationship, yes. Until she began seeing that man. Things changed. She was not the same. And then her bastard husband killed her. My god, that's awful. Yes, it brought shame to our family. Who was the man? Uh, his name was Sorin, I believe. Sorin Trellis. What can you tell me about this Sorin Trellis? He was a very strange man. Always dressed in black. He had pale skin. Very low voice. I saw him very little. My sister was happily married, but then Soren came into town. She would go off for hours. Later I discovered it was to see him. I tried to keep it from her husband, but he saw their initials carved in a tree in town. He was very jealous, and he sealed her in a barrel as punishment. But he left her inside too long and she suffocated and died. My sympathies, Miss Corza. This may be a sensitive topic, but do you know anything about the Headless Vampire? Oh, it is a terrible story the townspeople began telling after Roxandra died. They say she kicked her head off and became a floating head that drinks blood. But this is absurd. My sister died in the barrel because she could not breathe. What happened to the body? 
Her husband buried it, barrel and all. I do not know where. Please do not ask me anything else. This brings back too many bad memories. I apologize, miss. I don't have any more questions about your sister. Thank you very much for your time, Miss Corza. You are welcome. It looks like this whole headless vampire thing might just be a big misunderstanding. It would seem the townspeople merely came up with a supernatural story to add to an already scandalous tale of adultery. Only one thing stands out to me. Dragomir seemed like he was on the up and up. I don't know about his sister though. She said she'd been attacked in the cemetery. Indeed she did. Maybe we should take a look around there and see if there's a reasonable explanation for why she might have been attacked. Or fed him a line. That sounds like a reasonable course of action. This entire situation is pretty curious, wouldn't you say, Purse? Indeed. It seems a rather cut and dry case of murder. However, I fail to see where the supernatural angle comes into play. Percy, look out! My goodness, that was close. I owe you one, Arthur. Not a problem. So the Headless Vampire isn't just a local superstition after all. Quite. That Dragomir chap's sister really was lucky to escape alive. So now that we know the thing is real, we just have to figure out how to stop it. Indeed. Any ideas? For now, I think our best lead is to find out more about this Soren Trellis character. So the vampire was real after all? Indeed. And Grandpa Arthur saved you from it? That he did. Wow, that was one hell of a story. Oh, it is by no means over. But I think now would be a good time for you to get back to trying to figure out where the Cardinal has gone. So you're not going to finish the story because you think something has changed within the past hour? Yes, and time is of the essence. I really wish you'd just tell me what was going on. All in due time. I shall finish my story and tell you everything else once we've located Genovese. Okay, I'll hold you to that. Hey, can I bother you with some questions for a second? Sure, why not? I mean, that's why people go to bars, right? To be accosted by random strangers? I, I know it's why I do. So, tell me about yourself. Whoa, whoa. Hold it right there, buddy. This ain't that kind of bar. I mean, I, I realize the sweater might be sending some mixed signals, but... It was just a question. Right, yeah, of course, sure. There's totally nothing wrong with that, by the way. You live your life the way you want to. Wait, what? Don't worry about it. Anyway, I'm here in London with my buddy John. We're filming a show for the internet. It's like those travel shows where the guy eats raw fish heads, you know? Sure, I think I do. Uh, yeah, except in our show, John goes out and looks for weird locations. And I come drink at pubs. It's the best job ever. Huh, I don't remember that. Might make a good title. What exactly do you mean by weird locations? You know, uh, places off the beaten path, the kind of places people wouldn't normally go. You know, like your house. Oh, burn! One point to Carboni! Yeah, that's very funny. Yeah, I know. Kind of why I said it. 
Seriously though, what kind of places have you found here? Oh, tons. We just came from this psychic shop run by this real crazy old lady. Man, she was a trip. Tell me more about this psychic shop. I forget the name of the lady who owned it, but she had this big guy guarding the door. She had this pink turban and a black robe and the place was all made up like in the movies. Pink turban, black robe, and a flair for the dramatic? That's gotta be Madame Tilly Rosenquist. Yeah, that's her. Wait, did you did you just say flair for the dramatic? Yeah. Man, you're like a walking cliche, aren't you? Who talks like that? Look, can you just tell me where this shop is? Ah, not so fast there, Red. Quid pro quo. What? It's Latin. It means... I know what it means. What do you want? Well, why should I give away my information on weird places for free? Find me another one I can visit, and I'll tell you the location of this one. I don't have time for this. Yeah, and have you got time to wander around London looking for her shop? Fine, I'll see what I can find you. Good man. You're saving John some work. Take it easy. Yeah, you too, Gingy. Sir? Sir? Over here, sir? Are you talking to me? Yes, sir. Please, please come over here. I must speak with you. What seems to be the problem? The problem, sir, is that millions of children in this city go hungry each night. The problem is that they sleep in cardboard boxes and alleys. Ah, oh, great. What have I gotten myself into? And the problem, sir, is people like you who don't care. Look, don't get me wrong. I care about the plight of the homeless children as much as the next guy. But right now, I've got plenty of my own problems to deal with. Oh, I understand, sir. After all, this is London. Everyone is so busy. Busy here, busy there, busy everywhere. Everyone caught up in their own problems, not thinking of the children. Give me a break, lady. Um, you are a lady, right? Please, sir, think of the children. It's all we ask. Well, what am I supposed to do then? Take this informative magazine. It will educate you on the situations. Thanks, I think. Not so fast, sir. What? For taking a copy of the magazine, we kindly ask for a small donation. Alright, should have guessed. How much? A paltry five pounds, sir. Five pounds? For a shoddy magazine that feels like it was printed on toilet paper? Please, sir! Think of the children! Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, if it'll get you to leave me alone, here. Oh, thank you, sir! Thank you! You're welcome. Now please, don't talk to me anymore. Here, will this help? It's a travel brochure for places in London. Uh, let me see. Yeah, this is, this has got some good stuff, although it does sort of threaten to render our show obsolete. Ah, well, you kept your end of the deal, so here. This is the business card for that psychic shop you asked about. Thanks. No problem. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to continue my self-destructive binge drinking. Have fun!
Otto Schneider, is that you? Ah yes, Herr Jordan, it is. Ah, nice to see you again. What are you doing here? I have moved here to London and entered into a partnership with Madame Rosenquist. You mean she's still alive? Uh, I mean, how's she doing? Quite well. This is her shop you see before you. No kidding. Not at all. Uh, you should go upstairs. I'm sure she will love to see you again. You! I remember you! Ben Jordan, was it? That's right. We worked together a few months ago. Yes, yes, of course. How could I forget? Vanilla probably has something to do with it. Eh? What was that? Oh, nothing. Please have a seat over on that chair. So, what brings you to my humble parlor? Someone at a pub mentioned this place and I thought I'd check it out. I'm kind of running out of options, so I figured, why not? Running out of options? Whatever do you mean? You're the psychic, why don't you tell me? Ah, yes. I sense you are feeling a great loss. Oh my, oh my. Yes, I see your situation is quite grim. Please, tell me more so that I may do my best to assist you. I don't really have time to get into details. But basically, Simon is dead and Alice is missing. I need to find and stop this insane cardinal from the Vatican and I don't have much time to do it. Is there anything you can do to help? Yes, I believe there is. Gaze into the crystal ball, Mr. Jordan. I will commune with the spirit world and deliver their messages to you via the Orb of Truth. Seriously? Extremely. Now look into the ball. I call upon those who have passed. O oh, spirits, come forth from the light and give us guidance. Is something supposed to be happening? Shh. Yes, yes. Upon you now I call. Rise from your eternal rest. Simon Booth, come forth from death. Give us guidance. Wait, what? Simon, your friend is calling you for help. Come forth and show us the way. Okay, this has gone far enough. I beg your pardon? I really don't know what I expected coming here, but I know it wasn't to have some crazy old woman play Dial a Spirit. Simon was my friend. I won't sit here and have you make fun of him like this. You misunderstand, Mr. Jordan. The last thing I would ever do is... Oh, I understand all right. I'll see you around, Madam Rosenquist. Thanks for your time. Simon? Is that you? I would say, in the flesh, but I don't seem to talk too much about life now, do I? It... it's good to see you again. I'm not sure if I can say the same about Look, I'm sorry about what happened. I didn't know. Sorry! Sorry is going to make me alive again, is it? But this is no time for venting frustrations. It is soon you disturb my sweet hereafter to ask me some questions. So go ahead. Do you know where Cardinal Genovese is? As a matter of fact, I do. I think I do at any rate. Really? Great. Where? Shortly after the incident, I was lying down on the floor. Before I shuffled off the mortal coil, I heard Genovese talking. He said that since you so thoughtlessly destroyed the exorcism I left, he was now required to go in search of the final relic, which according to him was located in Paris. Paris, huh? Did he say where specifically? Uh, right not now. That's about the time I snuffed it. At least I know where to start looking now. So, what's it like? Being dead, I mean. There's a lot more paperwork involved than one would expect. Really? No, of course not. So tell me what it's really like then. Well, it's quite a lot of mystery. We're going to find out eventually. Why wouldn't it now? Do you have any idea where Alice is? Are you saying that I should know? Well, I always thought people acquired omniscient knowledge after they died. I thought it would be a lot more enthusiastic about dying, don't you think? I never thought of it that way. Anyway, no, I don't know where she is. I really hope she's okay. I don't have any more questions. Listen, Dan, I'm sorry I was a bit rude earlier. But I don't understand my point of view and all this. Being killed just makes up me one jump of joy. Yeah, I understand. This hasn't been easy for any of us. But mark my words, I'm going to make sure Genevieve gets what he deserves. I buy that. I have absolute confidence in you do exactly that. So, 
I guess this is goodbye then. I'm really sorry things turned out the way they did. It comes with the I wouldn't trade the adventures we have for anything. Me either. Okay, it's time for me to go. Now don't expect some sentimental nonsense about how I'll always be with you or anything like that. Just because I'm dead doesn't mean there's any reason to get all emotional. But I will say this. Good luck. Thanks. I'm gonna need it. So long, Ben. Bye, Simon. You were a great friend. I don't know. But don't worry. We'll see each other again soon. Or will we? <laughs> I'm gonna miss that. That was beautiful. It's always so tragic to see young lovers separated by death. Young lovers? There's no shame in it, Mr. Jordan. I may be old, but I'm not close-minded. Right. Goodbye, Madame Rosenquist. So, how did it go? Better than I had hoped. I'm off to Paris. I think not, Jordan. Your travels end here. Uh, not another one of you guys. Do you know this man? He's a member of the Knights of St. Anthony. They're a bunch of whack jobs who are trying to kill me. Now, now, there's no need for name calling. Look, I already know the drill. I'm not coming along with you no matter how much you threaten me. Not to worry, I won't waste your time. I've been sent to kill you, Jordan, not capture you. I'm afraid I cannot allow that. Whoa! Pretty impressive moves there, Otto. The compliment is appreciated, Herr Job. But we don't have much time. Go around the corner of this building. I have a car park there. I can take you where you need to go, but we must move quickly. I will meet you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm going. Seems we are being followed. What a surprise. Don't these guys ever give up? I will try to lose you. However, anything you can do to help you will be most appreciated. That was a little too close for my liking. Here we are, Herr Jordan. Waterloo Station. Thanks, Otto. I appreciate all your help. Think nothing of it. Good luck finding whatever it is you seek. And be careful. I'll try my best. Farewell then, Herr Jordan. Where have you been? Looking for you, that's where. I assume you have a lead as to the Cardinal's whereabouts. Yeah, Paris. Excellent. We must board the next train there. I don't actually know where in Paris, though. It seems, then, that we will have to concern ourselves with that bridge when we arrive in the city. After you, Mr. Jordan. Right then, I'll see you on board the train. Why is he always so skittish about being in public? Everything alright, Mr. Jordan? Yeah, I guess. I'm feeling a little better now that we're making some progress, but I have a feeling we've still got a long way to go. Well, there goes the scenery. Indeed. This is always the most boring part of the trip. So, now that we've got some time, how about finishing that story about you and Grandpa Arthur? Ah, oh, of course. Now then, where did I leave off? You'd just been attacked by the headless vampire in the cemetery. Ah, oh, yes. 
Arthur and I decided our best bet was to consult the town record keeper about the mysterious Sorin Trillers. So this is the place, according to the record keeper. Sorin Trellis' house. Do you suppose anyone is home? Only one way to find out. Arthur, what are you doing? Smashing the window with this brick so I can get inside. Is that really a good idea? I don't think we should draw any unwanted attention to ourselves. If it brings us a step closer to finding out why we almost got bumped off at the cemetery, it's a risk I'm willing to take. Alright, I'm going in. Are you sure you'll be able to fit through there? Because I certainly won't. Hmm, you're right. Well, it's probably better if you stay out here and keep watch. I'll just give you a shout if I need anything. Do be careful, Arthur. Jeepers, creepers! I had a feeling this trellis fellow was up to something, but I didn't think it was this severe. Well, that should take care of this town's vampire problem. Oh, uh... Hello there. Who are you? What are you doing in here? The name's Arthur Jordan, and... I thought this was the men's room. You are quite mistaken, then. And also, not a very good liar. Why are you really here? I'm looking for Soren Trellis. In that case, you need not look any further. The people in this town know me as Sorin Trellis, but you may address me by my proper name. Zothras. You're... you're pale as a ghost. What are you? Kind of you to ask. I am Mr. Goy. What? I believe you would have referred to it as a vampire warlock. You say you're a vampire warlock? What does that even mean? It's very simple. I bite people and drain them of their blood. And I have magical powers. Baloney! I can assure you, I am quite serious. How is it that you speak English so well? That is a long story. Then give me the short version. Very well. I spent several years living in your country state called Pennsylvania. If a Strigoi lives ten years in a country where another language is spoken, he can become human again. All that is required is a virgin sacrifice. I had gathered a loyal group of followers and was about to complete the sacrificial ritual, but one of my most trusted members revealed himself to be a traitor and ruined everything. I barely managed to escape came back here to my homeland to wait for another opportunity. You've got something to do with all this headless vampire hooey, don't you? That is correct. It was I who turned young Miss Corsa into what she is today. You heartless chump. How could you do that to the poor girl? How could I do that to her? I was not the one who sealed her in that barrel, leaving her to die. She kicked her head off trying to escape, which would have killed her if I had not intervened. 
Now she enjoys the gift of eternal life. Floating around as a head attached to a bunch of body parts. Yeah, I'm sure she thanks you every day for that. Okay, enough beating gums. You need to answer for your crimes. I don't think you quite comprehend the situation. You are trespassing in my house, hidden away in my secret room, alone. And I have not had a taste of fresh blood for a very long time. Roxandra has been a loyal servant for years, but I think it's time for a new follower. Don't try anything funny now. Oh, not to worry. This is quite serious. Ouch! Hey! Hold still, you wretch! <laughs> ah! Sorry, Zorthurus. You won't be getting any of my blood today. Perhaps not. But you can be sure I will not rest until I do. Mark my words, Arthur Jordan. I will have your blood, even if it takes generations. Arthur came back out of the house and told me what had happened. We informed the townspeople of the situation and went on our way the next morning. Wow, that's amazing. So that's why I was picked to be the sacrifice back in Smellholm? Exactly. There's still a few questions I have about all this. Of course. I think now is a suitable time to answer them. But I have to take a quick bathroom break first. Very well. I'll be here when you return. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. Oh man, why can't you jerks just leave me alone already? I'm afraid that isn't possible until you are taken care of. Now, I want to avoid making a scene out here in the hallway. Let's go back to your compartment and settle this there. I'm giving you fair warning, however. Don't try anything, or I will shoot you right here. Fine. Follow me. Ah, I didn't realize you were accompanied on this train. Your problem always was a lack of observation, Jennings. Quite frankly, I'm surprised they would have sent you at this phase. J Jones? You are alive? How is this possible? I thought... Yes, as I recall, it was you who was given the honor of executing me. It would seem, however, that you did not do as thorough a job as you thought. But... That was in 1956. Even if you had survived, you'd be over a hundred years old by now. Ah, perhaps I was wrong in my initial assessment. You are showing a surprising amount of observational skill. However, I'm afraid that the answer to that is not for you to know. My immediate concern is your threatening of young Mr. Jordan, and as such... Whoa! Help me get him out of here, would you? Genovese must be getting desperate. This means we haven't much time. Okay, I think it's finally time for you to tell me what's going on. Yes, you're quite right. Before, when I asked you about the knife, you said your involvement with them ended? How did it end exactly? I went out with a bang, you might say. One thing they neglected to mention when I joined was that it was a lifetime membership. As such, after Genovese became obsessed with gathering the relics, and I decided to abandon the cause, Jennings, the gentleman who was here earlier, was charged with executing me. The Knights of St. Anthony do not deal well with deserters. That night guy made a good point. How are you still alive? When Grandpa Arthur died, he was 90, and that was 13 years ago. You don't look any older than your mid-50s. That's because when I was shot and killed by the Knights, I was 55. Hold on. You were killed? Indeed. Shot in the head at close range. It was quite unpleasant. I don't understand. Does that mean you're a ghost or something? 
I don't think that is the proper classification, as you aren't the only one who can see me. But it is something similar. I suppose the best explanation would be something akin to a guardian angel, charged with your protection. This is a lot to take in. Who would exactly charge you with my protection? I'll try and make it as concise as possible, as it is a bit much to understand. When your grandfather saved me from the headless vampire, I was in his debt for my life. Despite our later falling out over my support for the Knights of St. Anthony, we still maintained that bond. When I was shot, I recall experiencing my death, but something brought me back. I didn't speak with anyone or anything directly, but somehow I knew that before I could rest, I had a duty to perform. That duty was to protect Arthur Jordan's grandson against the perverted ideas and actions of Cardinal Genovese. And so, that is what I have been doing since I tracked you down several months ago. Sorry if I sound rude, but what exactly have you been doing to help me? More than you realised. I was granted the advantage of some otherworldly influence upon my return to this world. What does that mean? Simply that I can manipulate the will of others to your benefit if the need arises. For instance, did you ever wonder why it was so easy for a foreigner to have such hands-on access at the police station in Osaka? Or why it just so happened that the only available taxi in Greece refused to go to Athens? Or who it was that recommended your services to Mr. Renzi? Uh, well... I've been working behind the curtain to ensure your success leading up to the final confrontation with Genovese. Unfortunately, I won't be able to help you with that, but I feel you're sufficiently prepared at present. Wait a second, if you wanted to help me, why were you such a jerk when we first met? Ah yes, that was my form of tough love, so to speak. The situation in Smellholm was extremely dangerous, and I needed to make sure you could perform well when faced with adversity. Luckily, you proved quite capable. Well, thanks for your help then, even though I didn't realize you were helping. Anytime. Ah, oh, it seems we will soon be arriving at our destination. But how will we know where to go? I've reserved you a room at a local hostel, the Hotel Comine. It's close to the train station, so you should have no trouble finding it. What about you? Unfortunately, I won't be able to accompany you. However, I will be in contact with you and watching out for you from afar. Okay, so I'll go over to the hostel once we stop. Good luck, Mr. Jordan. Oh, and do be careful. Although I doubt Cardinal Genovese has learned of your journey, it surely won't be long before he does. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye out for any of his goons. Bonjour. Welcome to the Hotel Comin. How long will you be staying with us? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think my friend booked a room for me. Oui, I can check. What is your name? Ben Jordan. Ah oui. Your room is at the end of the hallway. Enjoy your stay with us, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Thanks, but I think the questions will have to wait for tomorrow. This has been the longest day ever. I'm going to bed. Très bien. Good night, Monsieur Jordan. side of the mountain. We'll be safe here.
Bonjour, monsieur. How can I help you? Could I ask you a few questions? But of course. What can you tell me about yourself? What is it you would like to know? I don't know. What do you do besides run this place? <laughs> well, when I'm not running the hotel, I go to church. Really? I never would have guessed. You seem to take your religion very seriously. Oui, my parents raised me to be a good Catholic. I love Paris because we have so many beautiful churches. All with rich histories. I have studied them all and know much about them. Would you happen to know anything about relics? Relics? Yeah, you know, holy objects. Oui, I know them. Are there any major ones around here you can think of? There are several in France. But in Paris? Oh, oui. They say that there is one in sacre -Cœur. The church in Montmartre? Oui. It is named for the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Some say that the relic is found in the church somewhere. This is how it got its name. Interesting. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for your help. My pleasure. May I ask you a few questions? Naturally. What can you tell me about soccer Kerr? That is a broad question, monsieur. I can certainly tell you about the history of the church, if this is what you wish to know. Well, actually... What interests me is if the church houses any relics. Relic? Oui. There is one relic in the crypt downstairs. Some say it is the very sacred heart of Jesus for which this basilica was named. Tell me more about the sacred heart relic. It is simply the heart of Jesus, representative of his divine love. And it's here in the church? As I said, there are those who believe the relic in the crypt is part of the sacred heart. However, there are others who believe that the relic is false and that the real sacred heart is hidden deeper in the crypt. Interesting to know. Thanks for your help. You are welcome. I've got the final relic. Now I just need to figure out what to do with it. What is going on down here? I found the Sacred Heart, Father. You are sure it's the relic? Pretty sure. I mean, it was pretty well hidden. May I see it? Sure. Actually, I think maybe you should hold on to it. 
But just to warn you, I have reason to believe someone might try and take it tonight. Do not worry, my child. I will make sure the sacred relic remains where it belongs. Now, if you will please excuse me. Of course. Do what you have to do to keep it safe. Monsieur, what are you doing in here? I was just down visiting the crypt. Impossible! The church is closed to the public today. Closed? But I walked in here with no problem earlier. The other priest will tell you. What does a priest? I am the only priest here today. The other one who was here. I gave him... God damn it. Monsieur, have some respect. You are in the house of the Lord. I can't believe I fell for that. What are you talking about? Nothing. I'm an idiot. I'll be leaving now. Could I ask you a few questions? I suppose so. What are you doing out here in front of the cemetery gates? My job. Oh, are you a watchman or something? No. I sell the maps of the cemetery to tourists. Oh, I see. How much is it for one of your maps? It is 20 euros. What? For a map of the cemetery? This is no ordinary map, monsieur. It is printed on cloth and has been signed by all of the dead people in the cemetery. That's, um, handy information to know. Thanks for your help. You're quite welcome. I'd like to buy a map, please. You have made a wise choice, monsieur. Twenty euros, please. There you go. Thank you for your business. Enjoy the cemetery. Who are you? Okay, this is far enough. I don't know who you are, but I'm not getting any closer until you show yourself. Relax, Ben. It's just me. Alice? Oh my god, you're alive? I thought... I thought they had... No, they didn't. I'm okay. I'm glad to see you are too. How exactly were you able to find me? I thought I'd never see you again. It wasn't easy, but luckily I had help. When you and Simon were taken, I was able to escape without anyone seeing me. I managed to follow you to St. Peter's Basilica and was trying to find a way in. Luckily, your friend, Professor Jones, showed up. He told me he was going to take you out of the Basilica, so I went in with him. When we... When we found Simon's body, he told me I should go into hiding. It took some convincing on his part, but I finally agreed, as long as he would keep me updated on where you were. I asked him to tell you he hadn't seen or heard from me, in case you asked. What? But why? I didn't want you to distract yourself from stopping the Cardinal by trying to go out of your way to find me. I knew when things blew over that I could contact you and we'd get back together. Wow. I'm just glad I didn't freak out with your cloak and get out of the cemetery. Yeah, me too. Have you got any sort of plan with how to deal with Cardinal Genovese? Because, to be honest, I'm clueless. Actually, I do. I was able to find out where he's going to perform his ritual or ceremony or whatever it is. That's fantastic! Where? It's going to be tonight, at the top of the bell tower in Notre Dame Cathedral. Oh. Well, I guess I'm not surprised. It's not like he was going to do it in this hotel room. What are you talking about? Do you know how difficult it's going to be getting up there? I know it's not going to be easy. But we've gotten this far, I know you can do it. Well, I'd love to hear any suggestions you might have regarding how. My plan was to sneak into the church as a tourist, since most of the knights won't recognize me. But I don't think you'll be able to do that. Maybe you should ask Professor Jones? He might know some other way to get in. Yeah, he probably does. I just need to find him. You mentioned you found Simon's body? 
Yep. I can't believe he's gone. They... they killed him right in front of me. Oh, Ben, I'm so sorry. I feel really guilty about having left his body there, but there was nothing I could do. Oh, you don't have to feel guilty, Ben. I called the police and Simon's parents and arranged for his body to be taken back to England. That was very considerate of you. It's the least I could do for our friend. Okay, so I'll try and figure out a way into Notre Dame and then meet you inside? Yeah, say around 11 tonight. Cutting it kind of close, aren't we? The toughest part will be getting in, so I'm allotting most of the time for that. Okay, I'll head back and see if I can locate Percy. I'll see you tonight. Hey, before you go. Good luck. Good day, Mr. Jordan. I trust all is going well? Not really. I was able to find the final relic, but then I lost it. Or, more accurately, one of the Knights of St. Anthony tricked me into giving it to him. That is unfortunate. But the Knights can be rather cunning. But on the bright side, I found Alice. Ah, so she decided to make contact. Excellent. Yeah, and she told me the Cardinal was having his ritual tonight at Notre Dame. Yes, I was able to verify that as well. I was hoping you might have some ideas on how to get in there. I may. The path to Notre Dame will no doubt be heavily guarded tonight by the Knights of St. Anthony. A direct approach from street level would be most unwise. However, Paris has a massive system of sewers and catacombs beneath its streets. You may be able to use them to make your way to Notre Dame. That's an idea, but how will I avoid getting lost down there? The catacombs have been marked with signs and maps by urban explorers. You just need to find your way to Notre Dame. Okay, I'll do my best. Good luck, Mr. Jordan. I will see you tonight. Could I have a minute? Oui. What can you tell me about the catacombs? That all depends on who is asking. What is your business exactly? I'm an urban explorer. Ah, a fellow seeker. Very good. What would you like to know? So how can I get down into the catacombs? There are many entrances throughout Perry. I can tell you where to look, as well as give you a few tools you'll need to get around for a small fee. How much are we talking? Not too much. 50 euro? I'll think about it. See you later. Au revoir. Okay, here you go. I want to go into the catacombs. Merci. Now you can find the catacombs by going down into the sewers. Take this. It will help you with any manhole covers you may find. And also, it can get dark down there. So have this. And watch out for the cataflix. What are those? Giant rats? No, monsieur. They are special police who patrol the catacombs, looking for people who are there illegally. I suggest avoiding them if you can. Thanks for the tip. No problem. Good luck down there. Oh, and if anyone asks, we never had this conversation.
You? So all of this was your work?
Well, well. Ben Jordan. About time you showed up. You're Max, aren't you? I remember you. You shot me and took me to the Vatican. Then you killed my friend. When someone interferes with progress, that interference must be dealt with. You agree, don't you, Ben? I just feel I've been watching a bad dream I can never wake up from. I can wake you up right now. What's your rush, Max? After all, this has been a long time coming. Are you pleading for your life? Hardly. Baking doesn't work with you guys, remember? Your friend got too close to disrupting the great task. That's why you had to die, Ben. And that's why you have to die. Look at you. Do you have any idea how pathetic you look right now? There's no need for violence. I beg to differ. You need to be dealt with. Cardinal's orders. Haven't you ever stopped to realize that Genovese isn't right in the head? What do you mean? Think about it. What normal person goes around the world causing death and destruction just to find relics? Seems to me like he's put you all on a wild goose chase. I admit, I've had my doubts about the great task lately, but if I were to take your opinion into consideration, what do you suggest I do? Leave this all behind. Just walk away. I'm sure you've got better things to do with your life than attend to the whims of a crazy old man. Hmm... You know, you're right. I've served Genovese far too many years and have seen no results. Why waste time any longer on this nonsense? I'm leaving now. Good luck stopping Genovese. Oh, and don't even think about following me. Ben! Over here! What took you so long? It's almost midnight. A few unexpected complications, but everything's okay now. You're bleeding! Are you alright? Yeah, like I said, I'm fine. Where's Genovese? He's up the bell tower. The one closed off to the public. The stairs are over there. Well, at least I'm getting in my cardio for the day. Come on, I'll help you up. No, no, you stay here. What? I'm not gonna let you go up there alone like that. It's okay. I've dealt with most of the Knights of St. Anthony. An old man in a dress shouldn't be a problem. Okay, but I'm coming up if I hear anything. Deal. Now where'd you say the stairs were again? Right over there. You're a difficult man to find, Cardinal. And you are a difficult man to kill, Mr. Jordan. Normally, I would be angered that you breached my sanctuary. But you've arrived so close to midnight, it hardly matters. In fact, it rather pleases me that you will be here to witness the dawn of a new era. One I have worked so hard to bring about. Why are you doing this? I beg your pardon? You heard me. Why are you doing this? I would have thought it was rather obvious. Think about the world's greatest conflicts. The Crusades, the Second World War, the unrest in the Middle East. What do all these have in common? At their core, the cause was religious difference. Now, what if this conflict could be prevented? What if I could unite mankind under one faith, so that there would at last be tolerance and peace? You really think you can do that by taking all these relics? By collecting these artifacts and combining them here, tonight, at the stroke of midnight, I will succeed in uniting humanity and ushering in a new world order. One of peace and tolerance. Tell me, Mr. Jordan. Is that really such an evil wish? Does that make me the villain? Well... And you, who are here to stop me, to put an end to my plans, what does that make you, I wonder? This new era of yours, was it worth killing so many people for? I don't believe I follow you. Simon Booth, Percival Quentin Jones, Alessandro Renzi, Thomas Ryan. Do you want me to keep going? Those are but a few unfortunate casualties. Yeah? Then what about the villagers in Greece? Or the businessmen in Japan? Or the rangers in the Everglades? You've got a lot of blood in your hands, Genovese. So, is your little fantasy really worth it? 
I admit my plan can be considered by some to be radical, and society does not adapt well to radical ideas. However, I assure you that my intentions are noble. If a few people must die so that the world may live in peace, then so be it. I wonder if you'd have that same attitude if it was your friend that had been murdered. And I wonder if you would have the same attitude if it had been your younger sister who had committed suicide! Above all else, I am doing this for her! So that innocent children will no longer be forced into adulthood after witnessing the atrocities of war! So that families and lives will no longer be torn apart because they are the so-called WRONG RELIGION! So that humanity can finally be at peace with itself! For this goal, I very much do believe that the ends justify the means. What do you expect to accomplish from all this? At the stroke of midnight, the energy of these relics will surge and transfer itself into me. I shall then emerge as a being with absolute power over all religions. A god? In a manner of speaking. I shall be the Earth's representative of all deities, the symbol of unity among all belief systems. No longer will people fight or argue over which religion is best. They will have only one choice. And what about those people who don't want to follow you? I can hardly imagine anyone who would not. But, if I am met with resistance, then those people must be eliminated. So you're saying you're perfectly willing to commit genocide if you're not universally accepted? How does that make you any different than all the religious conflicts you're trying to prevent? The difference is nobody will oppose me. Why would they? I offer nothing but positive benefits. Yeah, we'll see about that. Now, enough talk. Time is short. It's almost midnight. I'm not gonna let you do this, Genovese. What are you going to do? Kill me? Push me out the window, perhaps? You haven't got it in you. You don't know that. You have no idea what I'm capable of. Hell, even I don't know what I'm capable of anymore. Your empty threats mean nothing to me. Just accept that you cannot stop me, and embrace the forthcoming change. I may not be able to stop you right now, but you can bet that I won't just sit and watch you take over. I'll fight you as long as I can. I'll do all I can to save the world from you. <laughs> Save the world? From me? When will you finally understand, Mr. Jordan? It was never your destiny to save the world! It's mine. Is something supposed to be happening? I don't understand. I don't understand. I've gathered all the relics. It's the eve of the new year. Why has nothing happened? Oh God. Antonia. I failed you. It had to work. How could I have been led astray? All those years. Wasted. What are you talking about? Who led you astray? Where did you get this idea in the first place? It was a dream I had as a young man. The heavens spoke to me and told me about the great task. How I was to collect the relics and gain their power. I spent years tracking them down. Years building a group of followers. Years believing this plan would work. Unquestioning belief can be a dangerous thing, Cardinal. It's got me into more trouble than I care to admit, and look what it's made you do. You've caused the deaths of dozens of people, stolen priceless artifacts, and for what? What have you accomplished? Enough! I don't want to hear anymore. I don't even want to live anymore! Go on. Do what you came here to do. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Kill me! Are you serious? Yes! Life is no longer worth living. Just put me out of my misery.
You were wrong, Cardinal. I do have it in me. Thank you. Thank you, my child. Ben! What happened up there? It's over. I made sure Genovese won't bother anyone else ever again. You... you killed him? He was a bad guy. He deserved to die. He may have caused innocent people to die, but that doesn't give you the right to kill him. He was an old man, Ben. It's not like he was much of a threat. But... I thought... What kind of person just kills an old man like that? I'm sorry, Ben, but I don't think I can be around you right now. Alice, wait! I can't believe she'd just leave me after all of this. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Jordan, but perhaps things between you two will resolve themselves later. So what happens now? I'm not sure. I suggest you go back to your hotel before the police arrive. I'll stay here and deal with them. What's going to happen with you now that there's no more night to say Anthony? An excellent question. I'm not sure exactly what will happen next, but I'm going to try and make the most of whatever time I have left here. I'd better go see if I can find Alice.
Just put me out of my misery. Wait, where are you going? Back downstairs. I'm done with all this. Fine, turn your back on the pathetic old man. I just wanted to do what was right. No! Damn. Ben, what happened up there? Nothing happened. It was all in his head. Genovese thought the relics would give him power, but they were just... objects. Oh dear. All that trouble he caused. Anyway, he won't bother anybody anymore. You... you killed him? No, he killed himself. Jumped off the top of the tower. Oh, Ben. It's okay. I'm just glad this is all over. Let's get out of here before the cops show up and start asking questions. Don't worry about the police, Mr. Jordan. I'll take care of dealing with them. What's going to happen with you now that there's no more nights at St. Anthony? An excellent question. I'm not sure exactly what will happen next, but I'm going to try and make the most of whatever time I have left here. Thanks, Professor Jones. Uh, Percy. For all your help. It was my pleasure, Ben. You would have made your grandfather proud. Well, no sense in dawdling about here. You and Miss Wilkins should go celebrate. It is the new year, after all. Goodbye to the both of you. It's certainly been an eventful few months. Shall we?
You were wrong, Cardinal. I do have it in me. Thank... Thank you, my child. Mr. Jordan, what happened up there? It's over. I made sure Genovese won't bother anyone else ever again. You killed him, then? Yeah. He killed a lot of people and caused lots of problems. He deserved to die. That's not for me to judge. I'm sure you did what you thought was right. So what happens now? I'm not sure. I suggest you go back to your hotel before the police arrive. I'll stay here and deal with them. What's going to happen with you now that there's no more nights at St. Anthony? An excellent question. I'm not sure exactly what will happen next, but I'm going to try and make the most of whatever time I have left here. Okay. I guess I'll head back. I really wish I knew what had happened to Alice. I'm sorry I can't be of more help with that, Mr. Jordan. It's okay. I'll manage. Just put me out of my misery. Wait, where are you going? Back downstairs. I'm done with all this. Fine, turn your back on the pathetic old man. I just wanted to do what was right. No! Mr. Jordan, what happened up there? Nothing happened. It was all in his head. Genovese thought the relics would give him power, but they were just... objects. Oh dear. All that trouble he caused. Anyway, he won't bother anybody anymore. You killed him, then? No, he killed himself. Jumped off the top of the tower. I see. So what happens now? I'm not sure. I suggest you go back to your hotel before the police arrive. I'll stay here and deal with them. What's going to happen with you now that there's no more nights at St. Anthony? An excellent question. I'm not sure exactly what will happen next, but I'm going to try and make the most of whatever time I have left here. Okay. I guess I'll head back. I really wish I knew what had happened to Alice. Don't fret, Mr. Jordan. I have a feeling you two will meet again. I sure hope you're right about that. <laughs>